Hello, welcome back to Average Gamer Plays Factorio. Right, where am I up to? I've started, I've done a little bit of carrying on off camera. Um, I'm getting some more modules made. I have upgraded, taken down my old red science, uh, red circuit factory and replaced it with my new eight beacon build which I've tiled two of them together so it's sharing some of the beacons um, between the two rows so basically we're now producing uh, let's have a look at my max rate calculator this produces uh, 616 um, red circuits per minute off just um, eight red circuit factories so each one as you can see is producing a circuit very very quickly indeed and then this purple bar means you know we get a free one so that's the effect of these four productivity three modules each one is being affected by 12 effect sources so that is uh, eight beacons and then the four modules and it's exactly the same process as, as the old factory. It's just doing it all with, with fewer machines. And because it takes fewer machines, it takes fewer resources, raw materials. So we basically, we get more out for less. Now, what I need to be doing really is upgrading the green circuit factory. I've upgraded all these to um, assembly level three machines which work faster they've got the capacity to put the modules in uh, they take up a little bit more power we're now using let's just click on a power pole we're now using yeah 100 and over 100 megawatts nearly 120 megawatts um, we're still well within our production range with the nuclear power plant but it's it's creeping up but because we're now producing a lot more green circuits and a lot more red circuits we were able to produce the modules a little bit faster there's always a little bit of a catch-22 situation you know with factorio in order to build a factory you first you need a factory so um we're now sort of starting to get over the hump a little bit i think um because i've basically i will the next thing i need to do well there's a million and one things on the to-do list i need to upgrade this green circuit factory to a beacon factory now the thing is with these beacon factories, uh, I used to think it was the beacons themselves that used up a, the bulk of the electricity because each one uses 480 kilowatts. But what's actually happening is the um, assembly machine itself, when it's surrounded by beacons, uses a lot more electricity. So this is 3.68 megawatts, it's 880% more electricity than it used to be before it says at the bottom of that pop out on the info box on the right let's say 180 percent plus the 12 and a half kilowatts that it uses by default so the bulk of the electricity consumption in these new factories is the assembly machines and not really the beacons these old assembly machines without any modules and without any beacons in them are using 388 kilowatts So it's like 10 times as much electricity consumption on one machine just surrounding it with, with beacons and, and using all the modules on it. But you need 10 times fewer machines, or hopefully. Um, so it's a little bit sort of swings and roundabouts, but ultimately a beacon factory will need an awful lot more electricity than a non-beacon factory. So I should look into uh, replacing uh, one or two of these well eventually replacing all of these smelting lines with uh, beacon smelters because ultimately once you've got the furnace with the productivity modules on it you basically get a lot more plates out for the same number of iron coming in the you know, same amount of ores coming in 
so we will end up with a lot more um uh, it'll slow down the resource the drain on the resources because not only do we get the productivity bonus from the um the mining productivity that we've done the research on but we also get the productivity bonus from the um uh from the smelting so we will look into now i've got a uh, a smelting um blueprint there it takes 30 beacons 60 speed and 24 productivity three modules 60 speed 24 prod three how many have i now got in stock 60 speed 24 prod three i've got 10 speed 31 prod three so i've got enough productivity right okay i've got 18 electric furnaces on me there i've got some more in stock let's just pick those up right let's have a look at get my right fingers on the right keys um right uh let's take out not sure how it fits in um i'll take this blueprint and rotate it does it sort of fit in over it actually does it's the same width give or take it's actually one tile narrower i think so if i take one of these out what i might do is take out this one and then i'll fiddle about with the lines because this one's at the end of the the end of the line so we can take this one out without losing too much and i might just sort of do this Ooh, all these are coming in now to pick everything up because i've set yeah all the coal and some bits and pieces are going to go automatically into trash aren't they um let's just put uh, a couple of those down there for a minute Um, let me just get rid of some of this stuff that I've got on me at the moment. Right, so let's see if we can put down uh, this smelting blueprint, and it's going to go that a way up. We'll just about fit in. There, I can maybe, yeah, I need to get rid of, that is fine, okay, so that is now smelting and it's also producing free items it's not doing it overly fast because it's not got as many um, um, beacons around it as it should have but that is so let's get uh, let's just do a little bit of fiddling about with this uh, let's move that to there And then let's get that over to there. So that is now feeding out from this line. And let's feed it in so that it keeps going. If I change this 
over here to a provider chest and we put a roboport nearby where's my roboports gone do I have one in stock do I not have one in stock let's get a roboport no I didn't have one in stock that is now within range so the robots should there come along pick up the speed modules and put them in here so this will then get and then this tells us that there are 20 machines that need attention and they need 39 um, speed modules between them but we should start to find that as that sort of fills up um, yeah what we'll do is we'll filter that out to the right so everything there comes in goes out again we'll upgrade those belts and again over time as I get all the speed modules made this will produce sort of quite a lot of um, quite a lot of iron plates we're definitely producing more red circuits than we're using at the moment so we've got plenty of uh, supply of those um, in fact instead of taking out the green circuit factory I could just build a secondary one somewhere and feed it in if I can find somewhere to put it um, That's going to have the inputs on that side and then the output over there. So that could go next to this somewhere. And that will be sort of in addition to what we've had before. And then we can sort of spaghettify that around. And then I can replace this one with it. Once, once this new one has, has, has picked up and taken over, I can maybe sort of move it back to there and have it in, in the proper place. But if I... Yeah, let's, let's build that over there for the sake of... Why the hell not this? Uh, we'll need to put a robo port down. We've got a robo port there. So if we put another one down, so we'll just over there. Doesn't quite fit, we'll have to put it. Put it there so it's within range. So we're now needing all of these things, but the factory will work and it will get there. And then I just need to wire in the uh, the copper and the iron plate uh, inputs once that's built. Come on, 
Is that not? Ah, I put that power line down. Didn't quite stretch far enough to actually give it power. But we have power now. Could I find some way of squeezing and I can put another row of beacons up at the top there. It's just a case of working out. I might have to sort of take all these blue factory, blue circuit factories down and build them somewhere else, or just build this this lot, um, move this down a little bit, so that that is kind of down there. Then I can get more beacons around these and get these to produce the modules a little bit faster, but. My whole point was to try and build uh, a fully featured... I mean, I am going to need these speed modules in, in their thousands, really, to build uh, a bigger factory, so I am going to need it eventually. Um, uh, let's just have a look and see how we're doing on the uh, the remote ore patch now that's interesting one of those belts is the wrong way around That is still 9.5 million, yeah. Uh, 24 million. Still 73 million down there, 3.7 million, yeah. That's all still working as intended. These are definitely getting uh, used up. If I could, if I had some spare speed modules, I can put them in these um, uh, miners. But they're still a pretty uh, rare commodity at the moment, so I'm just going to wait for them to uh, be used where they're needed first. Uh, once I uh, see this is now getting to be a pretty full belt coming out even though we're still missing uh, a handful of modules there so we're still missing a, um, a substation why am I not making substations 
plate, steel plate. Let's just make a manual substation. So basically, let's have the iron and the copper coming in there, and then the green circuits coming back out of there. Right, so that bottom one is copper. Right, I think I need to have the express underground belt on me. course that happens to be exactly where um, the pipes are in the way so that's not going to be quite a neat uh, a neat thing off there is it um, let's go with that One. We'll do this with uh, just red belts here for now, and then we'll see. We need to upgrade it to um, blue belts later on. So that should be copper and iron going in. And then we should start to have... Fast belt bending. Pressing R while dragging. Okay. It's automatically done the undergrounds through the trees, which is fair enough, but it's not really what I wanted it to do because undergrounds are quite expensive. So we're running out of uh, iron already on the belts, aren't we? So 
because I'm feeding everything through to this this wrong side. Um, okay, why are we not getting quite as much coming out on there as we used to? It's still coming in fast enough. Is it because it's now actually producing it a lot faster because these modules are getting filled in? Right, so that is being sort of fed out to go in that direction to go off to the mall. Ah, right, so we're still using loads and loads of iron to make all these gears because I now need to make a lot more of these um, belts because I picked up a load of belts. So I'm consuming a ton more iron on the uh, mall and it's not leaving any on the belt to make anything else. Not leaving any on the bus. Okay, but we've still got. Um, it's still basically sort of using. Picking up a little bit more. Right, that's probably because this is now backed up. Right. Um, what if I just go. That was quite clever. I like that new feature. Uh, right, so let's not go all the way to there. Let's. that under there I always intended to have basically a second line of greens we can go up there And if I make that uh, red, all those to blues as well. That is basically producing a lot more greens off a lot fewer um, inputs because of all these productivity modules. Because it doesn't have, um, it has a few speed modules around there, but not many.
So now I'm still waiting for 45 for speed modules. Right, now that I've got a lot more... See, now I'm waiting for... Um, I'm not getting any red circuits coming in. Why am I not getting any red circuits? What have I done to the red circuits? I've taken something out. Let's put it back. Yes, I think when I dragged this across there, it sort of took something out of there that it shouldn't have done. So I've designed this, basically we're doing direct insertion and I should really have done it so I'm putting these sort of on a belt and then bringing them back in again so I might uh, I might redo it or I might just bite the bullet and start building my big module factory my big remote module factory that I was going to do up in this area start doing that anyway because it should all eventually get built. Yeah, I'll look into doing that at the start of the next episode. I'll, um, I need to get my building train set up, and I might still need to add a few more factories and whatever onto the uh, onto the mall, so that I've got everything for the building train. Because I don't think I'm actually making um, all the uh, different types of logistics chests I should be doing. Um, and I'll build myself a nice big module factory and we'll start we'll start expanding this has now got plenty of um, raw materials um, See, maybe I don't need so many speed modules on here and I can use them. Let's take some speed modules out of there, stick them in there and then they'll get used up elsewhere. So once you start building everything up with the, um, you know, with all these productivity modules, then the amount of stuff you're getting out compared to the amount of raw raw materials you're putting in is just so much less, or so much more for so much less raw materials. So, yeah. can um, let's take that one off
you can feed that off this line as well and basically uh, there's a lot more coming out through this keep this line working as much as I can because this is the expensive one in terms of electricity and raw materials but you know I think now that I've got this other green factory up and running I'm still waiting for 32 speed modules Um, yeah, we'll keep that one going for a little bit longer. I will start to wind it down a little bit though. Let's. Uh, once I've determined that I can actually. Um, get rid of all this this factory without missing out too much we still need to make 29 um, speed modules for what we've already built so yeah I'll just wait until I've got some more speed modules in stock and then I'll upgrade that green that circuit factory to uh, another beacon one yep yeah, I'll just keep that running for a bit and we shall see how long it takes to uh, to finish doing what it has to do on the queue. And uh, yeah, we'll um, I'll come back to it again, and I will see you next time.